continuing here. So yeah, I was just saying you gotta spit it out when you love somebody, when you have fallen in love with somebody, and you feel like, hey, you know, maybe this is the one God wants me to have, okay? Then you've gotta spit it out. You've got to not mince words. You gotta not be cool. You gotta not be coy. And this, I think, is what King Solomon is alluding to, this sense that, hey, I've got to live with myself. i got to look myself in the mirror. And it's fine if, it's like that saying, uh, it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Okay, so you've got to let, your, your, um, let that person know that you love them and that you would really like a chance at their hand, okay? whether it's a man or a woman. I mean, it's okay for women to come on to men, but it's 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 less common. Uh, we, we kind of all know that it's up to a guy to uh, kind of initiate things. It's Because women, I mean, you know, they, they get asked, we all know. I mean, it's just the way it is. They get asked all the time. Men, how often do men get asked out by a woman? It just, it just doesn't happen, generally speaking. Uh, the guy initiates it and that's what a guy has that's what I'm doing and uh, I just wanted to um, to initiate that and let her know how I feel but again um, it takes two to tango and if, uh, if she doesn't think there's a chance there's a spark there that hey you know maybe uh, maybe this is the one that God wants me to have and uh, you know, who knows? I mean, what's going to happen? It, it still could come to be. And, uh, man, it, it's going to be life-changing. Uh, it's everything. I, I mean, I you know, the, my mind reels at the thought of actually winning her hand. I mean, I like to put it like that, winning her hand. And that what I'm looking for is what I want to give, and that is commitment. Okay, 100%. I don't want somebody that is not willing to give 100%. And this is where the whole, you know, that everybody's heard that saying, why buy the cow if the milk is free, right? Well, in this case, it's a bull. I'm the bull, and uh, I am not um, promiscuous. It's been many, many decades, uh, it was since I was a teenager, really, since I was like that. And I feel like I got taken advantage of. Back then, it was every girl that wanted to do me, I mean, I did. It was pretty much that simple. And there seemed to be a long line of those girls back then when I was a teenager. Um, I can't explain it. I mean, it was a promiscuous time. We're talking about the the early and mid-70s. Uh, you can ask anybody that was a teenager during that time. It, everybody was screwing everybody. I mean, it's just the way it was. Uh, yeah. I remember this one time, this woman, I was 17, I guess, at the time, and was, um, I was actually renting a room. I was living in half of a duplex, and um, my room was in the garage, And uh, but I put uh, indoor-outdoor carpet in there, and and uh, this gal, Laura Laura Lee, she uh, she was cute, but she, she had a boyfriend, but apparently it wasn't uh, a tight boyfriend. But he'd come over once in a while. It was uh, turned out to be um, son of the uh, famous uh, O'Neill. Uh, what's it? Jack O'Neill was his dad. It was uh, Mike. Mike was uh, his name. And uh, it turned out that uh, he was a heroin addict. This guy. But anyhow, Laura came through my room. She used to come through, putting out the garbage, and and I was in there, and um, and she she made advances at me, and. And, you know, I thought it over. I mean, a 17-year-old guy, come on, girls. He, she was 28 years old, I think she told me. And, uh, you know, when a woman is that young, she's not afraid to say her age. But, but I couldn't resist. And uh, so it happened then and one time, one other time. And uh, things fell apart. I think she ended up moving out. And But uh, Mike actually was, was living there. Mike O'Neill was living there in that duplex at that time. And. I remember the landlord was supposed to come by and pick up the rent that day and the rent for the duplex. We lived, mind you, half a block from the uh, beach. This was in Santa Cruz. And um, I gave him my half of the rent. And um, and he was supposed to pay his half. But it turned out that I got a call from the landlord later. 
that uh, the rent hadn't been paid. So at that point, I had to come up with the rent. And um, 200 bucks, it might not sound much by today's standard, but back then, a couple hundred bucks was quite a bit. I mean, that that duplex, no doubt, rents for probably 2,000 bucks easily, probably at this juncture in history. Um, to give you an idea of... Uh, you know, cost of living inflation. But anyhow, you know, that's just one story of the many, many, many women that uh, came into my life. And I really feel like I was used. I was taken advantage of. And they were put a notch in their belt. And I'm not sitting here saying, hey, you know what? I didn't have anything to do with it. But I mean, when a guy is that young, he's pretty much a sitting duck. And uh, I've been through that. And I don't want to go through that again. I'm glad. Thank God I'm not there anymore. Thank God I'm not going to bars Thank God I'm not online on social websites and, you know, try matchmaking websites. Thank God that I'm not visiting the brothels of Nevada. And I'm just very glad that, that that chapter of my life is over. As, you know, carnally pleasurable as it was, it was vapid and empty. And I don't ever want to repeat that. And I'm not going to. And uh, what I want, I'm going to stick to my guns. And, uh... You know, this, this bull ain't giving away the milk for free. you got to buy the bull. And that has nothing to do at all with money. But it has everything to do with commitment. And uh, that's what I'm looking for in a woman, that uh, she can commit herself to me. And, and I'm picky. You know, I am not one of these people to settle. And, uh, you know, some people say, well, that's drawback. That's tough. Because if you value a woman so much, it seems like there's a lot of, women that would be suitable suitors for you and that you if you weren't so stuck up and on your high horse about you know just your picky 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 you know then uh, you know you you wouldn't be single maybe uh but i just can't especially after waiting this long i just i can't do it so if i come across desperate lauren please under, understand this sweetheart i'm not desperate it's not like this. Nutty, yes, yes. I, I've gone completely nutty over you. Yeah, I, I will openly admit that. I confess that. That I, I see it just as much as anybody else can out there. I mean, here I make this video series for the world to listen to, and I'm sp speaking to her personally. I mean, that's nutty enough in and of itself. But the value that the entire world can glean from this is just my values are coming across. And I'm telling you that, you know, with everything I know, here's a man that really values wisdom and knowledge and information and, and, and education and all these things that are empowering. At the end of the day, the most valuable thing that I am positive I can ever glean, ever gain the greatest gift God can ever give me is a beloved. And so just the whole world can benefit from that and understand that this is serious stuff, this adultery thing that, you know, well, when it's happening to somebody else, it's their problem, right? And that you never had that problem with your beloved, your spouse. And maybe, you know, you did, and maybe you and your spouse reconciled your beloved. And, you know, you, you're that's beautiful. And I feel like I came very close to reconciling with my beloved. Okay, very close. And she was giving me clues that, you know, maybe she would. And so that's what kind of led me along to, to this day and time, this point in history right now, today, where I say there's only two women I would take. But once one comes back to me, the other one, it's done. I'm giving back 100% to my former beloved. I'll reconcile. I'll forgive her entirely. If God can forgive her, which I know he can, then I'll find a way to forgive her. If she could forgive me, Okay, if, then, hey, you know what? Everything will be good. I'll go back with my former beloved. So you understand how committed I can be? Okay, that's it. But the only other woman I want is Lauren. Okay, that's it. I'm looking at two women right now. That's it. And I have neither one of them. That's the state of affairs. I'm a single man to this day. And I don't like it. I never have liked it. It was horrific to lose my beloved. I mean, I just cannot animate. I can't put into words how bad it felt. 
But if you read about how King David felt, that'll give you a, a clue, a, a hint of how bad it feels, guys. I mean, if you really, really love that woman and you, you know, you wouldn't do anything to jeopardize the love that she has for you, okay, then please learn from other people's mistakes. You don't have to fall into that pit, okay? You don't have to, guys, okay? That's it. I mean, that's all I got. That's This is how I forgive myself. This is how I make amends to God and man, is by warning you, cautioning you that it is serious. It is not a joke. I mean, women, you know, like that song by Hall and Oates. I mean, man eater, they're all man eaters. Okay, you, you know, that's why I say, you know, underestimate the power of a woman, guys, to your own demise. Okay, because they can destroy your life for all intents and purposes. They can mess it up up one side down the other and to the nth degree okay thoroughly they can screw up your life if you hurt them and that's one thing a woman will not tolerate and they won't they've got their own pride and they won't admit they're jealous but you can be sure that we're all jealous okay guys you should know that you should know that think it through think it through do you want her okay to hook up with another guy, whether she asks your permission first and you in you in your pride and your failure to admit your own jealousy, sure, honey, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, he's all right. And then later you say, well, that was pretty dumb, and now I resent it, and so now tit for tat, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go get laid, and even though I'm not going to get permission from her, because she should assume that that's of course I'm going to get even. Right. That's so, guys, if that's what you want, because that's what ended up happening in my situation. OK. And I was very jealous and I wasn't prideful about my jealousy. I openly admitted it. And it turned out that I ended up this guy. He said he was a born again Christian. He had the Jesus emblem on his car and all those. That my wife had her affair with and it turned out I, I gave him a good punch upside the head upside the head I didn't punch him in the face I just kind of and with a padded glove but nevertheless I mean this is jealousy I mean this is what happens it's very common and um, and I actually did five days in jail low security jail but nonetheless it was I guess misdemeanor assault and um, yeah I, I I've never committed a felony otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get my real estate license back in 2006 so I know I'm not a felon but uh, you know look I wasn't ordered by the court to apologize to this guy but I did you know I it was wrong I mean it didn't help at all the situation it didn't endear my wife to me for showing you know how gallant I was and, going to protect her uh, name, whatever, you know. I mean, it just, things get crazy. They spin out of control, and that's when you lose it, man. You lose your marriage, and you screwed up, you know, your children's lives to a degree. You screw up your own life, and um, you know, I went through pain, you wouldn't believe, because my wife ended up moving from Santa Cruz. She took the kids. She hooked up with a guy that turned out to be a crack addict and he was an abused child physically and sexual sexually abused turned out he was a pedophile molester and i had to get custody of my daughters which was you can imagine you know how tough that was when the courts just look at you like you're a disgruntled ex-husband trying to get back at your wife and get you know wield your power as the father of these children and it's not wasn't the case in my situation at least it wasn't the case because I was would have been happy to let her keep custody my child support was only a couple hundred bucks a month and I could go visit them down there on a regular basis sometimes I went once a week believe it or not from Santa Cruz to Las Vegas is 530 miles that mileage is tattooed in my brain I know it well but um, anyhow yeah, so long story short, dude ended up getting busted for being a molester. 
convicted. She was divorcing him, and what a mess. I mean, it was just a mess. I had custody of my daughters. It was tough. They were little. I had to take them to work with me. I'm a self-employed landscaper. So, you know, that's just, you know, a little bit of what I went through from, from one bad decision, okay, to commit adultery.